Hey, hey, it is Zenial Gamer here with part two of the Summoner's War Optimizer series. So guys, the first part of this series was actually posted uh, probably about a month ago. It had to be posted right away uh, because Comptos made a change requiring that we use uh, HTTPS, a secure connection in order to run the optimizer. So part one actually explained how you install the optimizer, how you configure it for HTTPS, and also how you install it for Amazon Coins uh, so that you can use Amazon Coins. Now, this is gonna be a seven part series, guys. If you want a breakdown of which parts of the optimizer are in which parts of the series, just check the video description. For today's video, we're just gonna be doing a general overview. We're gonna be um, explaining kind of what the software is, how it works, and then talking about your initial setup and general configuration. Before we get into that, uh, just one thing. I get this question all the time, is the optimizer legal or not? Now, I cannot speak on behalf of calm to us I have no relationship with calm to us so all I can honestly tell you guys, um, I know that it's a violation of terms of service to use third party software to play the game, but the optimizer does not play the game. It does not edit data. It does not manipulate data in any way. All it does is capture data and help you organize it. It's like a super, super, super advanced spreadsheet. When I started playing the game, I was actually putting in every rune and build in a spreadsheet manually. So the optimizer is just a thousand times more advanced than that. Now, um, as far as I know, the uh, creator of the optimizer, Zandro, has had conversations with calm to us about the software. I believe there are tens of thousands of us who use the software. Me personally, I couldn't even imagine playing Summoner's War without the optimizer. Like, honestly, if there was no optimizer, I don't know if I could still play the game. With that said, I can't make you any promises about the legality. Uh, at least I can't speak on behalf of calm to us. Um, all, well, really, all I can say is that I feel safe personally using it. Now, with that said, let's dive into the optimizer itself. So to start off with, you guys, I can you guys can see I have the pro version loaded right here. Uh, another very common question about the optimizer is, is it free? So the deal is there is a free version and there is a paid version. The paid version is $15. It is a one-time only fee. This is not a sponsored video, guys. Um, although I've spoken with Xandro in Discord, I have no affiliation with them. I get no portion of any revenue. As a matter of fact, I'm a patron of Xandro. I pay $10 a month on top of uh, the software fee. With that said, I personally think that the best, if you, if you spend anything on Summoners of War at all, the best $15 you can ever spend is on the pro version. Here's why. The pro version runs builds off of your graphics card. The free version uses your PC. The difference is about a hundred times faster, probably more than that. So you are literally able to run a hundred times as many builds in the same amount of time, which means you ultimately find better builds, um, particularly if you've been playing the game for a while and have more runes. With that said, uh, if you don't have a budget for the optimizer, there is a free version available. There's also a web version available, but I would highly recommend just installing the free version on your computer, which leads us to the next question. Can you use the optimizer on a Mac? So. As of today, April 18th, 2021, when I'm recording this video, there is no Mac version. I have heard that there may or may not be a Mac version in the works. In the interim, if there is not a Mac version, I would just suggest putting a Windows 10 emulator on your Macs and then just installing the um, optimizer through that. I know you can buy an, a Windows 10 emulator as an app for Mac. Uh, and then once you've done that, you go into the Microsoft store and you can install the optimizer, whether it's the free or the paid version. Now, uh, maybe I should have led with this in the video, but a lot of you guys, um, if you're still watching, you probably already know this, but just to make it clear, the purpose of the Summoner's War Optimizer is to basically organize your runes, your artifacts, and your monsters, and then help you find the best possible builds for your monsters. So again, seven part series, we're gonna be talking about how you do those specific things in a later part of the video, but I just wanna give you a quick overview or a quick uh, demonstration of what I'm talking about. So in this tab right here, you would actually pick whichever monster you want. You could put whichever rune sets that you wanted to put on the monster. You could put whichever slot runes that you wanted on the monster. There are quite a few configuration options that will help you refine the perfect build. You can set target statistics. You can choose whether or not you want to use runes that are already available on monsters. Or you could skip most of those and just run it simpler and pick from the builds the optimizer presents you. So if I t tell it that I want a 290 speed Clara and I go ahead and I hit optimize, 
it will show me all of the builds I have that can be 290 speed or faster on Swift Will in Speed HPHP. And then I can go through these and pick them. Now again, I will be going through this entire configuration. This is an entire video unto itself as to how to find the videos. I just wanted to give you an idea of how it works and what the purpose is. So once you've picked a build, you click on the build and it shows you the specific rooms that you would put on your monster. So we'll start right here on the export import page and that's literally what it sounds like. This is where you import your JSON. So if you ever hear the term JSON, uh, you see right here .json. The JSON file is the data file. Think of it as like the spreadsheet, um, but it, it's, not, it's not a traditional spreadsheet, but it's like the spreadsheet that has all the information about your monsters or the database might be a better way to uh, explain it. But for the um, for our purposes in the optimizer, we'll be calling it a JSON. So right here, you can import your JSON file. Now, when you import your JSON, you have two options. You can either do a normal build or you can do an RTA build. So uh, in the game, you know we have two different sets of runes. We have normal runes, we have RTA runes, and they're saved differently in your JSON. So if you want to look at just your RTA box, then you would click this button right here and you would import your builds. Now, there's a little catch here. As you go along in the game and you do more and more builds, part of finding your best builds is going to be locking certain monsters so they can be excluded from searches. Um, and again, the, the actual function of how we're going to lock the monsters will be covered in depth in a later video. For right now, just know that you have the ability to lock a monster. So for example, this uh, Water Ryu right here is locked. And so when I'm searching for a rune, if I don't have use locked runes checked, then it's automatically going to exclude him from the search. In order to import the JSON, you have to have this Keep Builds button unchecked if you're importing a new JSON or an RTA JSON. So when I click Import it right here, it says you can't uh, refresh data from another mode because I have Keep Builds checked. If I uncheck this and I import into a different mode, then I lose my locked monsters. Origin locations are basically whenever you move a rune, it tells you where the rune came from. So let's say I take a slot one from Tableau and I put it on Akia. It will tell me where that origin location of the rune was. It will tell me that the rune originated from uh, one monster and went on to another. Now, the remainder of these four options down here, uh, these are basically talking about which monsters are going to be imported and how their names are displayed. Uh, but this is all a personal preference thing. Now, the other portion of the settings that we're gonna talk about today is this settings tab right down here at the bottom. There are a few pretty cool things in the settings tab. The first one is what I was talking about earlier, that ability to automatically lock monsters on import. So you can see right here, I have configured the optimizer to lock certain monsters on import. And the reason I do that is because on this version of swap, I will go back and forth between my normal JSON and my RTA JSON. And so, I want these monsters to be relocked. I want them to be locked again as soon as I import that other JSON. Now, next to that, we have efficiency weights. This is a way to adjust the efficiency formula if you want to view your monsters with certain weight added or removed to certain stats. So you can see right now I have everything set to default, but let's say, for example, I don't value crit damage, right? That's the meme, guys, right? I don't value crit damage. So maybe I want to reduce the value of crit damage in my efficiency formula, and I just want to reduce it by 30%, so I drop it to 0.7. If you're not really comfortable with maths and efficiencies and all that stuff, I would leave this alone. Okay, down below that, we uh, you can see we have an auto import option. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can import with and without a dialogue. You can import um, based on inter intervals or um, only once at the start. And then there is a live sync option as well. Um, it says beta. It um, The last time I used it, it was working pretty well. I will tell you guys, I have bricked my optimizer several times with the backup by trying to import the wrong file. Uh, I believe Xandro coded in a safeguard literally because of me, because I kept bricking my optimizer. But rather than going through this feature, um, because of my own bad experiences, I don't want to give anybody wrong information. Uh, I'm just going to say be very careful when you use the backup feature that you import the correct file if you choose to import any files at all. Uh, below that, we've got the theme. You can go between dark and mint. I think almost everybody except me uses the dark theme. 
Honestly, the only reason I use the mint theme is because of the orange. It's a little bright for my eyes. Uh, below here, you'll see that it does automatically import your buildings. And if for some reason you wanted to adjust your buildings for a specific build, or maybe you're running a build for a friend or something like that, uh, you can adjust your buildings in here as well. Uh, one important thing of note, and I'll mention this when we do the speed tune video as well, uh, in the speed tune tab, it does not update the speed tower right here uh, to whatever is imported, so you actually have to update that manually. Now let's talk about the general settings. So the top and the bottom right here, these are just personal preferences for how you use the optimizer. The two in the middle though, this is the part that's really important, this is what I want to spend some time talking about. Show grind values in runes table and include grind values in rune efficiency formula. Now, if we go over here to the rune table, and again, this will be in a separate video, we'll do it more in depth. But if we come over here to the rune table, we can look at every rune that we have. And if I sort by efficiency, I can see which rune I have that is the most efficient. Now, we look at this rune right here on Vigor. This is 100 and almost 25% efficiency. It's my single best rune. It also has quad grindable stats and it's been grinded at 10, 10, 8, and 5. Now that is the efficiency of the rune as it is right now. If I come in and I uncheck the include grind values, if I uncheck include grind values in the efficiency formula, I come back over to the rune table and now we don't see that rune on the table here on the first page at all. We move, we have to go down, how many pages will we have to go? We have to go 7 pages. This rune started off as my 64th most efficient rune. Now, this is, uh, this is uh, there's a couple of things to that. First of all, the fact that the rune could be grinded four times instead of three um, is why it's so much more efficient. But the reason this matters is when you're trying to determine which runes have the most potential. So which runes should you put your legend grinds on? Which runes should you put your legend gems on? Things like that. You usually want to start off with the runes that rolled the best. Uh, con conversely, which runes do you want to reap? You usually want to start off with the runes that rolled the worst. So what we've done right here by unchecking this value is we've shown ourselves how did the rune actually roll. So when I look at this rune right here, the rune that's my most efficient rune wasn't my best rolled rune. It became my most efficient rune after I gemmed and grinded it. My actual best rolled rune is actually is an Ancient Legend slot 3 on Lucian, but when we look at this rune, it has two stats that aren't grindable and one stat that's not grinded, so it's nowhere near my best rune by efficiency, but it was the best rolled rune for me. Also keep in mind, efficiency is not everything. Efficiency is a tool, one of many, uh, but what efficiency does is it just basically tells you how many stats your rune has as opposed to the maximum possible stats a rune can have. So if we look at this Lucian rune right here, it's got crit rate and it's got crit damage and that's basically what Lucian needs, right? Especially off of slot 3. So the fact that it has 29 crit damage and 4 crit rate, that's perfect for Lucian. This rune is much better for Lucian than a 30 speed rune that has HP and defense and no crit rate and crit damage. So it's not telling you that, you know, efficiency is not telling you it's the best rune you have or the worst rune you have, but what it is telling you is how many stats did that rune start with compared to how many stats the perfect rune started with. So this checkbox right here, it's one more step down that path to evaluating which of your runes started off the best, and it helps you identify those rehab targets, those grind, and those gem targets. Now, the other thing we can do right here, uh, the show grind values in runes table, this is almost just a formatting thing. The important one is the grind value and efficiency. But right here, if you just want to see what the value of the, you know, of the rune is after the grind, you don't want to see the actual grind itself. So right now, this swift six, it shows as 14 speed because I uncheck the option. If I recheck the option and look at it, it's going to show me that it's actually, um, the rune is really 10 plus four. Okay, so that's it for today's video, guys. Again, um, this is part two out of a seven-part series. Uh, I'm going to be going through the optimizer in as much detail as I'm able to. There's a couple of things um, in here that I don't know perfectly, um, and I'm just not going to... I don't want to guide you wrong on those things, so those topics I won't cover, but as far as it co goes through monster builds, damage calculations, uh, the, the really most important things, uh, those are areas that I'm really strong in. 
Um, if you want to see what the rest of the videos will be, check the video description. If you enjoy the video, please uh, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Turn on bell notifications. You know the deal, guys. Um, as always, guys, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. And we'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, if you're still with me to this point, then that means that you probably liked the video, found it entertaining, or even better, both. So please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below because those things help the channel grow, and more importantly, they show me that the video is useful, and that's the whole reason I do this in the first place.